Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to day two of the Riyadh Masters and the final day of the play-in stage as well. We had 24 best of twos yesterday to kick off our action here for a $15 million tournament. Denog, we have a couple more series today to determine how kind of the play-in series will, uh, will shape up. So it's going to be some uh, exciting stuff in store. Yeah, like you said, 24 best of twos yesterday. Today, a little bit more chill. You know, we got six best of twos, but then those four deciding best of threes, which will be really hyped to see which are the teams that are going to go forward and which are the teams that are going to get eliminated. I'm talking about that thing down in the bottom left hand there. So you can see first and second in both Group A and Group B, they move on forward. And then third place, six, fourth place, fifth across Groups A and B. So I'm really excited to see how that happens. And really, that's... What a few of these games today, because again, these teams are only playing one series each today, are going to be doing. It's going to be shaping a lot of what's going to be happening, especially in Group A, where I believe first and second are already uh, decided with Liquid and Asta already getting those two spots. Yep, that is correct. So uh, at least for Group A in particular, with those remaining teams, it's just important in regards to seeding. So um, you know, we can even speak about Group B as well. The only thing guaranteed so far is that Beast Coast will be, be playing that Decider series. We still do not know who's going to take first or second place in a Group B. Yeah, I mean, uh, Extreme Gaming, they're playing OG, Nine Pandas, they're playing Secret, and Quest are playing... Uh, Beast Coast. So if you're a Quest fan, it's looking pretty likely that they might be securing one of those top two spots. We were, you know, a bit uh, buoyant of their potential after the Bali Major. Some people kind of hopped off the boat after Amar was uh, not part of the team anymore. But, you know, they're really coming forward and putting in some good performances together. And we could see here some of that uh, seeding is even going to matter just with, uh, you know, with the play-ins, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th. You know, you might want to be leaning towards one of these groups that might be a bit easier. But honestly, these are some pretty superstar teams. So I don't think there is an easy group. No, I, I, I don't think there is a, an easy group as well. As we get to see what all the teams are playing for, of course, a prize pool of 15 million first place. That is, uh, what would you do with 5 million, Matt? What, what would a lot you of do? Yeah, That's that a is, lot of shawamas. I have no idea I, what that is as well. <laughs> it's like a kebab. This is a version okay. of a kebab. Okay. Very, very good. Very good. You're, just, you're so cultured, man. Always uh, just missing out on it. It's always food as well. I got I to gotta take you out to more food places. Oh, take me to this OG Extreme game. That looks exciting. Of course, we're going to be kicking off with Execration versus Entity, but really... Uh, the Mango Group Bowl? B. Yes, the, the Mango Bowl. The, the C Brothers going at it. I mean, Gabby up against a very, very old team that it used to be on with, uh, with Execration. Mm -hmm. and it's going to be very exciting, the Battle of the E's on the C stream. But uh, you got to say, Entity, do you think they overperformed? I think they're performing pretty much where I expected them to. An execration probably slightly below where I expected them. I still thought that they would be in that like third to sixth bracket, but some of these losses have been a little demoralizing for them, if I'm being perfectly honest. Yeah, demoralizing is uh, is one way to put it. I 100% I agree. Entity, I think this is at least the position I thought they would be around. Uh, execration, yeah, I thought they'd get a couple more wins as well. So um, this could be, you know, could be the day where you just... Here. Exactly, exactly right. And and just all you need is that one important best of three win. That That's really it at the end of the day. So maybe you're, yes, there was just a, a lot of experimenting, coming in with a couple of strategies, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't work. And now today in this series, you can you know, test them out, build that confidence, build that momentum into the series. That is really all that kind of matters now for these teams. So uh, I do also want to say, I think that this series is more important. Well, no, for execration, as well but for entity if they get a win here if they get a 2-0 and uh tsm don't get a 2-0 then entity will finish third which means they again then play the sixth place team in group b which is currently beast coast so um and i guess I for execration isn't a bad team that's the no, thing like without it's a not a guarantee by any stretch of the imagination no, I'd 100% at least with how this tournament's going, you'd say, you know, you'd probably rather verse them if they're having a, a bit of a rougher time. So that is at least what we are playing for in this series in particular. It's just seeding for that final decider series to be able to go into the group stages. And we do have a draft underway. It's going to be Execration on the Radiant side with first pick. We've got Entity on Die with second pick, Execration. We're going to look to try and start with the Undying. All right, so... 
time to break this one down. Uh, Entity, they chose second pick. I think it's very important, especially in these series that mean a lot. Execration, they're a team that thrives off of getting a good early start and using that to snowball into the later stages. So take that away from them by winning most of your lanes. The plus side, of course, for Execration is that they have this Undying to be able to play around with, which, you know, wins most lanes that it's going to be playing with. So Entity as well, they're looking to get rid of a few of the meme strats that uh, Execration like to play with. First phase Visage ban, not exactly super common, but against them who run the Lunar Marcy Visage combination, I can see exactly why. And uh, we get to see a Fishman Chen, I'm assuming it's going to be Fishman, Katomi could play it as well, but uh, really was one of his top five heroes for a long, long time. And this is something that we saw yesterday as well with Entity, with being able to flex the, the Primal Beast into the four. Katami was uh, the one that played it. I do like the response from Execration though, going to the Ember Spirit. Uh, we have, I mean, as a game response, it's pretty nice for a decent chunk of the time with the chains being able to uh, hold him into place. Uh, of course, you will be able to purge that eventually with the, one of the talents, but we have also seen the lane kind of go back and forth between the Ember Spirit and, and the Primal Beast, right? I don't think it's that more, you know, one-sided at the early stage, but kind of when we start to see there are some rotations, Ember can kind of come out on top. I really wouldn't hate to see Shanks go something like an Enchantress here, just because it's good against the Primal Beast. I, yeah. Like we you said before, Kataomi, he did play it yesterday, we were casting it. Um, but they have the potential to throw it on Gabby. What it does do is it really prevents Storm Stormer from picking it because A, the Ember Spirit's good against it just in the lane itself. I'm not sure if they would want to uh, lane it into the Undying as well, so they might already be planning to push it back to four. But if for whatever reason they do run it mid, an Enchantress really just enables the ganks for it. It also means that your lane against the Chen is going to be pretty good too with the Enchant. Uh, you can also get into the Shard for the little friends to turn the Chen army onto someone too. So there's a lot of benefits from the Enchantress here. Yep. I'm also seeing for Entity, I think the potential for a Enigma, which is something that Gabby's been playing in pubs. Uh, it also then gives you the possibility for the Primal Beast to be played as a four, just having a, a melee range pairing. And I think Enigma is kind of one of the better heroes to lane into the Undying as well. Highest win rate of the top 10 contested heroes, by the way, is Enigma with 61.5%. Okay. Uh, Undying is the most contested hero. 33% win rate, though. So a lot of those are bans, uh, just really looking to set up their lanes a bit more. But a lot of people are just trying to shoehorn this Undying into every draft. And, well, it's very strong still, but not mega busted anymore. No, but I still feel like it's... Do you, do you have any concerns with the Undying? Because I really feel like I, I don't... I don't hate seeing it in every draft. I feel like the, the hero just does a lot, provides a lot, and it's just easy to open up with in the, in the first phase. I'm fine with it as well. I think they really just want to... It, it forces the enemy team to kind of change how they want to make the lanes happen because there are some heroes that are just straight up unpickable yeah. into an Undying. So uh, <laughs> it's probably going to be Abeg playing it, and uh, Undying is probably the last word that you could say yes. for some of his uh, games yesterday. He was dying left, right, and center, man. Like, just across the four games that I saw, it was like 40-plus deaths combined. So... Uh, hopefully he's able to take this little bit more durable hero and make it work. It's an interesting Huskar ban. I know we've... There were a couple it's, of interviews... It's the yeah, yeah, that's that's kind of the, the big thing, right? There were a couple of interviews at Dream League where I think it was actually maybe Quinn, but in particular, like Gaming Gladiators were speaking about just the early first phase of the Ember Spirit and kind of trying to... To, to counter it in the lane, you need a lot of niche counters, you know, and Huskar is definitely one of them that a lot of people don't really play. Um, Snapfire is an interesting one, though. This is Love kind of your snap. classic, like, uh, Southeast Asian, really, Yopage was one who I think, uh, at least first that I saw, invented kind of the Snapfire response to the Ember in the mid. Oh, he's terrorized Bob in the past on yeah, this, so he might yeah, be just yeah. thinking, oh no, what again? But to be honest, when I think Stormstormer, I don't really think of, you know, the, the Snapfire mid. He plays it, but it's not one of his real signature heroes. So what I love about the Snapfire is A, it's a response to the Undying. B, is a potential counter to the Ember Spirit in lane. You've got second pick, and you can still flex it to be a three, for example, with mm -hmm. Gabby playing it and then Kataomi sure. just goes the Primal Beast. So I think this is totally cool by Entity. What I want to see them do is pick their position one with the last pick of this draft. I know you don't see Execrations just yet, but you've still got another phase of bans. You'll still be able to take out the biggest counters to it, and you'll leave that flexibility open. And now you know what lane you're going into as well.
So what are we looking at? Because Entity Safe Lane, it's going to be a lot of spam. Out of the blasts and the axes, so you need to be considering a hero that probably has a decent amount of built-in sustain. Don't um, hate a faceless void here. I hate, I like it combining not combining yeah, together with the snapfire. Ah, uh, oh, would have loved it. Uh, just it's a Watson staple as well, right? So what else can Watson look to go against this beastmaster? Okay, yeah, just the slark. All right, there seems fine. Can be issues like this is. There's damage to go yeah, through. It's, yeah, it's. The Slark is not really the greatest response for the lane, as far as I'm aware, but as the game, it's it's very nice versus the Beastmaster, and, and they offer zero control against him. So Watson mm -hmm. staple, but it's just, can you get out of the lane? Because it will be a little bit tricky. Chen doesn't help you that much. Um, so it could also come down to potentially how we see Katomi rotate on uh, on his support. But yeah, I don't hate the Slark. It's just you know, your, your lane can be a little bit uh, difficult. And you've also, I mean, against the Slark, you might need to be bunkering down inside of that Tombstone once he really gets online with the Diffuser Blade, the Aghanim Scepter. It's honestly not a bad Mage Slayer game this time around. Most of the time you'd look to build it against, like, uh, Lashrak, but against the Beastmaster, Keeper of the Light, hell, even the Ember Spirit, it's a very heavy magic damage lineup that Execration have right now. Can you not still Enigma for, for Entity? Five uh, I think you still can, for sure, but... They're just going to wait and see what Execration pick up with this course, last yeah. overall pick, right? They've got the Snapfire Flex available for them between uh, mid lane and off lane, so yeah. use it to its fullest potential. Hell, they can even still put the Primal Beast mid and put the Snapfire 4, and it's still a 3 that's yet to come for them. So they've got... Uh, the world is their oyster with this second phase that I really like from Entity, but I don't hate this Execration draft either, right? They've got strong lanes so far. Bob is very good on the Ember Spirit. And it's something that synergizes well together, right? With Coddle Ember, you want to be getting kills frequently, and Beastmaster allows you to do that with the Hawk Vision. And I think it can just, we can simply say this is an execration draft that has worked for them uh, in the past and, and a couple, uh, more than a couple months ago, like around 2 or 1, where they were having a lot of success. Like this is Shanks they really like coddle drafts you've got a lot of synergy with it you've got a staple on dying fire bob on his best hero like it's just this is kind of what we were asking for them yesterday right like mm -hmm. you just wanted to go back to your comfort back to what has worked they were kind of picking up some heroes that maybe weren't as strong at the moment um but this definitely looks like a, an execration draft yeah the heroes that I was looking for were like Bloodseeker and Terrorblade, but they're both gone, so mm. won't be able to pick either of those up for Execration. So what is Palos going to play into this? I really don't mind like a dual melee lane, to be honest. It, maybe even something like an Alchemist could work. Just try and get really aggressive just because you've got that little bit of a steroid with the Keeper of the Light to get nice and active early on. Also, the Acid Spray is a pretty decent response to the Chen if they just try and swarm over you. Um, yeah, Undying plus Concoction, very deadly in lane two. Palos also does have some kind of left field heroes that he plays as the carry. Not the Spectre again, please. Oh, uh, yeah, that's that's not what I was... Uh, yeah, not the Spectre. I more mean, you know, like your your Marcy's, your, your, he'll pull out your... your le like, not really the win condition carries. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the less Shrak we, we've seen from him. Um, Even like a ranged hero that builds a four star for a hurricane pike i wouldn't hate right because you can get out of the slark bounce you can disable the oh okay I, I don't mind this as well you know again it's not exactly a four star builder but you can just look to get really aggressive and start running people down i i feel like execration took their loss against liquid personally and they're like right what did these top tier teams these perennial grand finalists do against us and how can we use it to our own benefit So I wonder if now you just do you Enigma now into this. Like I, I think it's a fine enough Enigma game. They don't have a lot cancel for Entity for Gabby to be able to play. They've been playing it a lot. Razor can somewhat deal with the Eidolons. And I guess the Undying can as well. Yeah. But you just want to try and stay as far away as possible. And that's really what Enigma allows you to do, right? Just keeps the lane a little bit further pushed back towards you. And then once the Eidolon split providing you're playing with a primal beast you've got a lot of damage output potential kind of like co-op off lane can you oh the co-op off lane <laughs> oh, that's a stretch I'm, I'm just trying to think of like mobile heroes to play into the razor lane mm, that is that banned 
I made a bet. Gabby likes to play it. I mean, offlane puck. If anyone can do it, Gabby can. Man, I have not seen offlane puck in a very long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what do we got? They will bat. Very good call. Okay. Um, I wonder if it even is offlane, though. We still don't know 100%, because remember, this is Stormstormer that yeah. we're talking about here. It is going to be Gabby playing it, though. Kato Obi, once again, picking up the Primal Beast. I, I just like Entity's Draft throughout. Probably, like, if it wasn't Watson playing this Slark, I would be feeling a little bit more anxious about it. But he is just so solid on all the mechanics in this hero that it, it leaves you with a sense of ease, you know? That you've got uh, to be able to have faith in it. I mean, so Snapfire into the Ember Spirit, it's a good lane. Bat Rider Primal Beast, it's strong lane. Chan Slark, it's a relatively strong lane, especially against a melee hero like the Beastmaster. So you think? it's really... I think it's relatively strong, right? Beastmaster has to... Can't rely entirely on the axes to get his farm in the lane, right? You need to be right-clicking a little bit, and you're going to be taking some harass going back the other way. I, I'm intrigued. I think I think actually Kreisha win both their side lanes, so I am... I think uh... they can. I like, it. this isn't like a massively one draft for either side to buy. This is, I would say this is the happiest I've seen, I've been after seeing an execration draft for the entire okay. tournament. Uh, I, I do agree with that point as well. Yesterday it was, um, I, I, we, we, we obviously see, the, I mean, this is very different. They've taken uh, a page out of the book of Liquid as well, which I believe even the games that we weren't covering later in the day, they even picked up more raises. So um, something that is starting to come back into popularity. I have not checked if any other, the other teams are running it in uh, in Group B as well. But uh, we'll see how Palace is able to shape up on the Razor and how they can perform as well. Because of course, like we were saying to start kind of this series off this uh this one is important in regards to seeding. Entity looking to try and get that third position so they can verse the sixth place in Group B. And Execration, they're fighting for the fifth place um, so they can verse fourth then. So I'm um, still a little bit that they are going to be fighting for. So I mean, yes. with, with them, you just need to like, you just need to try and win, right? Like winning is uh, habitual is what a lot of people say, right? If you start winning, <laughs> you'll just win more, basically. What's up? Uh, Palace said Pinoy. <laughs> <laughs> Is Gabby? He's European okay, now. there we go. I see the GPK fan too, so... <laughs> I can. Watch it was that update, man. We just needed to wait. Yeah, true. Ah, <laughs> oh, Gabby, Gabby. Alright, alright. Let's see. Got a interesting... Movement out of Entity, deep inside Execration's Triangle. No one's going to be home at the moment. Looks like Radiant currently setting themselves up over to the right side of the map. I did already get an Observer Ward down, though, so they are well aware of uh, this potential movement. I've whipped out the old Google Translate, by the way. Gabby was saying, don't be arrogant with that <laughs> in response. So, yeah, a little bit of banter to be able to start things out, but I don't think Gabby's one to shy away no. from, uh, from the bands. He rated Execration as an F tier coming into this event so you know what maybe uh, he could cop a little bit of the beds it's important if you can if you're going to dish it out you're going to be able to cop the banter as well and you know, we'll see if gabby is, uh, is able to do that gotta keep eyes on tips uh, gabby uses his the all important yes the all important i do uh very intrigued how this mid lane goes as well i've not seen it in quite some time but um, do you want to elaborate a little bit on, on why this stat fire is a very good matchup versus the Ember? I mean, you just got a good attack animation. You've got pretty good armor, so you can withstand from the uh, the slide of fist relatively easily. And if you go the flame guard build, you're going to be able to just quickly burst through it with your magical damage as well from the cookie and the scatter blast. So it just feels relatively solid and I mean with Ember. Especially at the earlier level, since they nerfed the slide of fist cooldown a little bit, you're having to come forward. So, like we see just there, he just gets slammed in the face with the scatter blast as soon as he moves forward, even an inch towards these uh, creeps to try and secure those last hits. I mean, now as well, three points in flame guard is not going to protect you against a three in scatter blast with that uh, with that nerf. So yeah, I mean we'll we'll see how much it's going to to further impact this matchup in particular top lane. It's a back and forth going on. Power the blood grenades, man. They're, they're enabling potential kills from both top and bottom, to be honest. Like, uh, I'm really thinking that maybe this Undying, which... <sighs> look at bottom, man. We're, we're once again getting the... I don't even want to call this musical lanes. It's like a conga line at bottom. 
with yeah. the uh, Undying and Primal Beast just trying to manipulate where exactly it is. This is a double wave coming back to us, Execration. And Gabby's just trying to keep it as far away as he can. I mean, this is the way you play against an Undying, though. You don't play against it. Just try and make the lane somewhere else. Yeah, sometimes happy. a Razor as well, too, on top of that. So, I mean, that's why Gabby has the wind lace queued up, too. So do your best Gabby to... Gabby got a single last hit so far? No, he hasn't. He's just been spending his time. You know, pulling things around. Atomi has three at this point. Not the perfect spot for the lane to be able to rest in. So, you know, it's going to start pushing back once again towards Palace, who's farming next to his tier two tower. Wouldn't be really efficient. He could be standing underneath the uh, tier two for that extra regen. But, you know what? We'll, uh, we'll, we'll give him some leeway. Oh, he's Arbe. fine. He has a tango on the banner creep. <laughs> Yeah, he'll be just fine, actually. Yeah, he, well, he would have been full health for a second at all. Oh, yeah. I'm dying. Uh, oh, bang, what's going on? Oh, Gabby, come on, dude. Really? You got, you got the high five. You got the kill as well. So it looks like he can dish it out a little bit. Up lane, Tino. Watson's already used the pounds by the looks of it. What oh, Arbing picks up here. I don't know if he started with a wind lace or if he's just... Uh secured it for himself now, but that'll certainly help him from trying to run away from this Gabby Bat Rider as he's... Yeah, it's already three minutes in. <laughs> We're already getting the wind lasers. I'm expecting to see, you know, a few waves farmed at this point, but there hasn't been a lot of farming going on on this bottom side outside of uh, Palace. I guess one thing is that the position four and entity is going to have a bit of a difficult time being able to make stacks for the Bat Rider to catch up, so... We shall see how they're going to be able to continue to help Gabby out as they will once again go back to the pulling shenanigans. Mid lane though, Storm Storm up. He's in a lot of danger. Slides back up for Bob. Like you said, with all the armor that the Snap uh, is able to play with. Extra tower hit as well, Bob there. Really dangerous to have to come back forward. Oh, the slide. The one there. I wonder if there's going to be a rotation. I mean, I'd really love Shanks to be able to stack these up and then go to the top water rune and make sure he's able to steal that one away from the Snapfire. That would result in a one lane. And, well, there we go. He's able to just yoink it away. You've got a bottle refill there. And Stormstorm is kind of begging for someone to come to this lane to be able to help him out. But oh, if Shanks was able to just go and yoink away that bounty rune as well, it would have been a huge win for Execration. He does have this to, to be able to fall back on. Gives a, a bit of breathing room as well for Bob, which is important. We said with it being a bit more of a, a tricky lane for him. It still drags the Coddle away from top, so you're not continuing the, the spam in the lane, which I thought really was going to be the issue for Watson. Um, I mean, this hero wants to just live on as minimal health as possible until you get level 6. They're actually going to make it go onto the Beastmaster. Shanks is back nearby. Does it get the Blinding Light pushed back onto the Slark? But it's not going to be an issue, though. He'll be fine. I mean, that's the thing, right? You've got Shanks making some of these stacks for them. You've even got the uh, the boar, not named, sadly. We, we love seeing the, the named boars, you know, the one uh, for Paper Bob. We saw all the times during CDBC, but happened this time around. Let's see if they're going to try and make a go on Bob before he's six. Slide is down, which is always a bit of a window. Doing a good job, though, body blocking this, keeping the creep wave as close to the tower as possible. If it just that tiny little bit of extra armor, that's why. Oh, there nice slide down. down. And they're going to. Oh, bottom lane. Got to dive onto the tower. Now back to mid we go, Bob. A little bit awkward there. I believe the chains was able to hold back one. So close to having the level six on Stormstormer as well. So with all that action going on, we did get to see the kill down bottom onto Gabby's Batrider. And there's a lot of damage into the tower, too. It's a full wave along with the catapult. Nicely done. This is still a game where you feel like it's it's not necessarily set up for the lane for Gabby, right? Like, I wanted something that was able to, you know, maneuver over cliffs and have a bit of reposition with that flame break just to be able to deal with this Razor. It, it's a game counter, right? Because you know what Razor builds. He wants to get into that AP. And Kisses as well being used as well. All right, double kill across the map for Entity. You get what I'm saying, right? Like, they, they really are just valuing this lasso so heavily and with an undying eh, even the coddle honestly there's not a lot of kill threat once the lanes start to dissolve a little bit so someone like a bat rider can afford to get incredibly greedy and just be like cutting waves right in front yeah. of your tier three towers 
Yeah, I, that was the point I was I was going to bring up. Is like how how do you actually address a bat rider when he's when he's cutting ways? You've you got a Chen that can do that. You've even got a Primal Beast that can do that as well. So this entity here is it going to be able to find gold a, a, across the map? It, it doesn't matter if they've had a rough start, and they haven't. They've, they've they had in fact a very good start. Slark, top of the net worth, one perma Adji. Importantly, he's about to hit level six, which means he can play the lane solo, and then Fishman can go back and and farm the jungle. So you're gonna have a pretty Fast early items out of the chain. He's actually gonna go medallion first on fish, man. Uh, makes sense, I guess. I mean, I, I, I'm sure he's just going to be leading things to how Watson wants them to be done, right? Because uh, what, what's he nearly got coming out to him on Watson? Just the blade of alacrity for now. But if you get into an early ish defusal blade, you could really start to wreak some havoc. Solar crest enabling that even further. Plus side is, Tino, he's not going to be short of farm. Lots of stacks being built up by Shanks, which of course, the stacks end up giving him that uh, golden experience as well. So, an execration, making sure they're secured their wisdom room. They're, they're not this. going to be lacking in them. It's a huge rotation down to bottom. Katoma's going to be the one, first though. one to start. It's a deep dive out of the tower. Palace is going to have some assistance with Bob T being in. And the Ember Spirit should be able to clean up. They're going to have no response with all their abilities previously used. It means that bomb flying to third. And now can be able to chase down Fishman as well. And this was all set up thanks to the Observe Water inside the river. They had the awareness that a movement was going out from Entity. And they could respond in a heartbeat. That's the thing as well, like, it took a long time to kill this Razor, a good, like, six seconds, and by the time they went onto him, he just got raindrops delivered, he had 21 charges, so far longer than they had hoped, and with that Eye of the Storm just getting a few of those procs off, you have an Ember Spirit with a blood Blackstone as well, maxed out Slide of Fist, so Bob was able to just clean up in that one, feeling 2.2k damage. And it's another pretty goddamn good ember game as well they mm -hmm. don't have a lot of ways to be able to place as this game goes on speaking of bob he's chasing down gabby as his firefly has just worn off as well might be looking to go for the kill he's got three levels on the man should be able to get it bob Ooh, yep abilities back up meanwhile opposite side of the map one of my kisses in use once again to help get the kill onto tino they're also going to scale out the ancient stack we're going to try and consider about going for some more kills. This is super deep, though. Storm Stormer. Did he tell and he didn't even get the kill, Bob? Here for the cleanup. Katomi should be able to get the charge away, but... That's way too deep. Yeah. That's way, way, way too deep when you know that the Ember Spirit has that TP available. He's even going to get a bottle refill coming in from the base for Tino. And the other part is, like, Entity, diving deep makes sense if you're actually able to use it and steal away a lot of these camps, but they really don't have any heroes outside of the, the that rider that's capable of doing it. And Gabby's still level 5, so he really just wants to get up a few of those earlier levels, get that Firefly maxed out into the lasso, and then you can maybe look to do it. Radiant structures good are for execration. Looking very good for execration. What stack's being built up? I think Tino might be getting a little bit greedy here. All the creeps are just running into each other before he gets a chance to stack them. I mean, just... This is the Bob we wanted to see, right? 4, 0, and 2. Doing uh, a lot to be able to put his team on his back. Already finishing up that Mithril Hammer, so... With a lot of that minus armor that they've got, with the Orb of Corrosion, with the Eye of the Storm, and just pure damage coming through from him, he's going to be able to rip through a lot of these heroes. You should You feel like entities should consider about I mean it looks like they'll probably be a little bit too late to contest the ancients. Katomi is scouting it out. Trying to soak as much experience as he can. He's pretty close to level six. They're gonna be able to utilize the raw. Not much they, they can do to block the charge it, away though. I mean you oh well, okay. He's <laughs> stuck on a cliff. Still gonna be able to TP out though. Watson looking to try and get the remaining creeps, potential nice kill lighting. as well. That's going to help them get some separation. Storm Storm mid lane, yeah, Storm Storm is getting dived out of the tower, Bob. He's got two remnants. Slide. Does he want to go for it? Oh, yeah, he's considering it, Bob. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I thought he was going to go for it. I thought he might have been able to kill him. If he kept running outside of that tower range without the extra armor that it provides, like, live armor is huge at this stage of the game. He would have probably been able to get the kill, but Bob, for once, showing some restraint. Dude. This is the guy that we know. Bob is... And not even Bob, man. Palos is second in net worth. This Razor hero, 
Like, Max Plasma filled him with the Eye of the Storm if you just use it off cooldown. You farm incredibly fast, and we are seeing that be the case currently. Abed gave him a free lane, man, with all of that yeah. uh, creep manipulation that he did. Sure, he gave up the first blood, but it was well worth it to get Palace off to this sort of start. And this is where we see Execration play their best owner. A lot of people... Watson? Able to get away with the Palace. He's in danger, though. He's got Bob the by level 10 on Bob. I have to use the ultimate early. I actually want to try to take the fight. It's a pretty good start from Kitsomi. Lasso going to be used as well for the chain control. A huge streak. It's going to be Fishman claims the reward of, and now they want more blood as well as Palos. Along with Shank, should be able to find their own escape avenue, but Entity, they strike back. Got to be careful here on Palos. They're using the Twin Gate to be able to get down and potentially kill him, but Watson thinks better of it. Uh, that was the fresh uh, reveal of the Diffusal Blade as well when they were going for that, so I'm not sure if they would have been able to secure that kill without the extra mana burn damage that it uh, provides, but I was thinking maybe they were going to hold back on that until they got the Solar Crest, and indeed they did. Fishman, good response, it just layers out so much more damage, and now they're going to get into that mechanism after that, so... Entity, they're preparing to ball up, but they're just not quite at that point yet. Love about the Chen as well, right? Look at the net worth. Easily sitting above all the other supports in this game. Even a primal beast that's super capable of farming up a lot of creeps. And smoke, though. Try and take away some of these stacks or invade into Gabby's area. There's a little bit of a vendetta there, you might say. Killing their uh, fellow countrymen. Making sure he's like, yeah, are you sure about that decision to go over to Europe? See if you know, scans on the mark. It's like Bob does show. It's like, please just don't walk up here. Let me finish this stack. Anyway. They will be able to secure it for him. It'll be at the loss of a tier 1 tower, but as long as you secure that stack, as long as you stick around, perhaps, for the Wisdom rune, I think you're going to be generally okay with it. Maybe Mortino is getting his own space as well, farming another stack at the Ancient, so this is about to be Scepter completed for the Beastmaster. They're not going to bring more heroes down to bottom, though, on Entity to contest this Wisdom Rune, so it does... Oh, they're going to come now, but they might be a bit too late. Let's see. Katoma's going to give them the information. Tombstone dropped down, which gives them firm control of the area. Kiss is still going to prove to be a bit of an issue for the moment. He does get Secure. the Wisdom Rune, though, before he dies, so... Eh, it's not too bad. It's not too bad, but you do lay it down Ooh, a This board. could be bad, though. Yeah. Bob... Back in with the combo. Palace as well. It's going to get involved. Gabby finds the lasso control. And now they're going to have Watson even getting involved. He doesn't have the water man up. Watson now easily can turn. Eats the healing lotus. And now he's going to be able to munch onto Abeng. Does have a teleport. And should be able to make it with the pounce on cooldown. It's a little bit too keen. I mean, that's twice now that they've been fighting away from the tombstone. Previously up top, it was on like a seven second cooldown still when they went for that previous gank attempt. And uh, really ends up costing them multiple times. Can't be giving up these two heroes that were having the best start to the game by far. Who got their own wisdom rune sitting down there? And well, you know, this is a real early Aghanim Scepter as well that he's been able to pick up. So a lot of that AoE damage coming through. We were worried that they might not be able to have the potential to deal with the, the Slark with AoE damage, but this is a nice way to be able to address it. Also, Chen creeps too. What do we feel like we can expect out of Watson over the next... Well, hold that because of fight. It's Bruin. I'm going to try to get the wrap around. They'll start on the Undyne, but Katami as well sees an angle to get onto Tino. Looks like he's still going to be able to get the raw, but it does not matter. So Entity, find a couple of kills. They might be considering Roche. They All got right. a lot of minus armor. They, they do. Got, uh, drums just used, so not actually the active there. But yeah, the little Shredder. Got Solar Crest as well. Have plenty of damage to be able to take this one out with all the Chen creeps. Gabby just doing Batrider things. Look to cut waves. Look to just play as far away from where Execration really want to be playing, which is you know, damn aggressively. I like this Lotus Orb choice from, from Gabby as well. You, you've, you've got the, the spell for the root, the raw, the static link. I mean, it really just enables... Watson to to be able to play super aggressively this game on the Slark. Mm -hmm. Even just the, the plate mail is going to do him a world of good, right? To be able to be in the thick of things, really getting full benefit out of that Firefly and not dying to the Eye of the Storm and the Sleight of Fist. 
It's such an incredible timing, though, for them to, to win that team fight. You, you've got night time for another 3 minutes 30. You, you've got the, kind of the two items that you'd ever hope for out of Watson. So it's just going to be them sweeping across the map. Bottom is all theirs. You've got great vision up top as well. So pretty much you are always going to have some informa information on multiple of the Execration members. So you can do whatever you want with, uh, with very ease. Yeah, Palace, oh, you might see Kataomi here, and is he gonna die from this? You have that Diffusal Blade available on the Slark. Mass TP, so they want to continue to go for the kill, though. Watson has got a whole lot of damage at the moment. Still should be able to get the kill into Palace in the end. Do they have the reinforcements to be able to continue up the fight? As Watson starting to stack up the Essence, and he's gonna continue to feast onto our Bang. Watson is a gigantic issue for Execration at this stage of the game. He is. I was really thinking that maybe they might just TP like one person back that's going to be able to save him. Maybe Shanks, just with that blinding light pushback. They get rid of the ward and they take the tier 2 top. I think that was the bigger deal for them. They're still able to open up a bit more of this map for themselves. And it's a really important thing just considering you are going to be playing against a Slark that already has a, a good amount of vision, especially during the night time, but he is that big counter to the Beastmaster as well. So you want to make sure you've got plenty of wards up so that Slark spends his time worrying, well, where can they see me? Can they, can they not? Why is my Shadow Dance working? You can see he's already getting the D wards off, carrying a nice little uh, Lotus Sentry wards for himself. Something all the best Slarks do. It's free gold. That's what I say, man. It sucks like, Support by the Sentry, sort of like, bro, do you not want gold? Do you not want XP? OP? Yeah, I'm, I, yeah, it is OP. Free stuff is always very good. So, you see, Watson without a doubt has been able to get so great use. Bags. I mean, he's so ridiculously far, man. This is, this is stupid. They're even setting up onto Palace bottom lane as well. Uh, Palos, I mean, good luck, brother. Desperately needs that BKB. Ooh, no nice way. little dodge, though. What? Right. Right. Clever, clever. <laughs> I like the fact that Kataomi held the onslaught, though. Just not giving him the vision, because you can hear it from the uh, the fog. So, just waiting, letting they Gabby be the one him. to make that initiation. Yep. So oh, still on cooldown. Oh, he's staying a bit too long. Team's a little bit closer now. They are smoking to try and connect. Tombstone's going to get laid down. We saw how tanky Palace has been prior. He would back up to full, but oh, Watson's going to be here for the cleanup. They'll do their best to protect the Razor, but it's not going to be enough. Maybe Bob has got the damage to potentially turn the team fight back around, but it's just Bob against the world because over to the right side, Gabby oh. tried to use the lasso to be a bit of a nuisance onto Execration, but it's actually an all-out retreat as Entity. They're going to try and cut their losses. Gabby should be able to fly on away. Katomi, though, will not have the same fate. So in the end, Execration, you once again do lose Palos. You will be able to find a couple of kills in return. Oh, they almost got Stormstormer as well. I'd love to see a replay of that. I saw Tino go for like a 360 no-scope onto the Snapfire, but just with the uh, the increased turn rate, he was way too slow and Snap was able to get out of dodge before he was able to land that extra Axes. That would have been enormous if they were able to kill Stormstormer and really halt a lot of his item progression. He's nearly behind the Chen in net worth, uh, despite having this really solid lane set up for himself. Good lane. We're gonna Stormstormer. Look to try and make the attempt on Tatino. They've got the numbers advantage. Maybe they go for it instead. Lacking a potential little bit of damage. Bob's got one remnant to work with, along with the lucky haste rune. Tino, Tino went back in I'm though. Deep, my guy. Yeah, instead of running the opposite. I mean, he probably doesn't escape anyway, but he's like, all right, I'll just try and bring someone down with me, but. Uh, it's not going to be the case, Watson. Is that... Oh, my God. He's got 11 perma agi. Mm -hmm. He's got, like, 9, 0, and 4. And, well, he's even looking to protect the rest of his team. Never mind the rest of his team. He wants your team. And they might be able to get Palos as well. as look at Gabby's positioning. Flying over from the left side. Gets the control to make sure there's an extra kill to add to the tally. Up to 19. And a big net worth lead to go along with it as well. Got the Shroud available, he went that early Mage Slayer that we were wanting, love it. I mean, again, a lot of this damage that they've got coming out is magical right now, outside of, yeah, the Razor a little bit, but the Ember Spirit, there's still a good amount of magic coming through with that Maelstrom, with the Fire Remnant, with everything else that you've got coming your way. 
got to remember that it's spell damage as well, not magic damage that the uh, leap up ends up getting rid of. I'm missing a lot of danger. Up. Yeah, all right. Well, if you get the first kind of pounce, then maybe you do have a, a lot of difficulties with potentially playing this game for the Ember. I mean, what, was he like 4-0? And, and now he's 5-4-2. He four four yeah, that's just... He, he was almost the man to be able to do it for Execration. We, we've really felt his presence in the early game, but a couple of deaths. I mean, you were just highlighting Stormstorm as net worth, but he's overtaken both Bob and Palace, who was also having a very good game early on. Yeah, all it takes is a couple of team fights, and Snapfire is one of those heroes that you really feel kind of useless from this, like, level 13 to 19 point. You know, you want to make sure that you get up to that level 20 as quickly as possible, and the only way to really do that is team fighting. You don't have the greatest farming potential, so... Uh, Execration are kind of playing into Entity's hands here, and they're going to be damn weak after taking this Tormentor. Ooh. I don't know the way they'd hope enough. to start. They got Maybe they're not too worried, though, with the double damage rune on Watson. We'll start to get trail. the essence onto Tino. Won't have an opportunity to use the Roar. Actually, does get it off, and Tino might be able to live. Watson, one more swipe secures the kill, and now with all the essence, he's going to continue to go for more as well. Watson wants the ultra. Gets yoinked in his face. I saw Spy out Bob over to the right side. He's got one more remnant to work with. Gets a little bit of separation, but two. really that distance is not enough as Watson, Oops. an uncharacteristic miss from him. But it really is not going to matter in the end, as Watson is beyond godlike. Pipe. <laughs> sure. Why not? Hey, someone already has pipe, right? I remember seeing it. Uh, he's been spamming Maybe. it since like draft. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's better than Zeus Alt now, which we were getting a little bit tired of previously. Boys are feeling himself. Why not? Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Must say, I don't I don't know how much this has impacted them in regards to the playstyle, but Watson is looking very good at this tournament. It looks like he's a little bit more enabled with uh with, with Gabby in instead. It's his slark though, man, right? Like this is the hero that he really became famous on. That's I think and, and, and being able to have the luxury of like last pick luck as well it's like well, what more could you possibly want and that thing against a beast master it kind of goes both ways right you can get that quick jump if you time the uh the blink into the raw onto the slark when he doesn't have the uh the dark pact available but also got a way to be able to scout out hey they've got plenty of uh plenty of vision around for us yeah be all another charge in and like look at the the vision on execration it's just shrunk massively Let's see Snapfire up top, though. So I wonder if that's going to lead them to think that they can actually make a play, because Stormstormer, he's doing a decent amount of their damage right now, and this smoke kind of feels like it's a way to get away a little bit, you know, go for this big wraparound that they're drawing in on the map, just to connect through with their other two cores that did TP up top. Bob has been working on this BKB yeah. for, like, the past 10 minutes? It kind of feels like, and mm. he is still a good 600 gold away. Like, you just need to avoid right now. Just do not fight until we've got this item, because they are ruining us with it. Oh, this is a scary position. Entity having the left high ground. Palace will sneak on up. BKB does just get completed as well. Watson's going to try and target down a bang for the moment, but they spy a juicy kill into the Razor, but the chain control is going to be a little bit off the mark. So Palace protected thanks to that completed item. Oh, but Bob still doesn't have his. Like, he was... There were three creeps that died right in front of his face as he remnanted back to join the team, but it really doesn't feel like you're all that effective. And, you know, they get one kill, one that really anchors the fight around a certain area. They take out your vision, so once again, you're basically playing blind. Now what can you do? You know, you, you're you still having to walk back to the bottom area that you were just farming. It just feels like they're, they're getting their priorities a little bit out of order right now on Execration. And this game doesn't get any easier, though. With, with Roche being up in 20, that fight gives you all the control at the top side. You see Gabby's cutting bottom, so all the lane's going to be in a great position. I mean, this Roche is... I, you could maybe try and contest it. I don't know if it will go in your favor, though. But I don't know I if... I think you have to. It's at the point where they have to. You know, they just... They need the BKB. They would love level 15 on both the Razor and the Ember Spirit just for a little bit of that damage boost. 
But beyond that, you, you just have to contest. You're not going to get a better opportunity. And they're going to try. So what they're able to do with these BKBs complete for execration, they're going to charge down the lane. Stormstorm would be a good target. And he would. Pretty tanky though. 2400 health they have to go through. They're going to look to run back on off. Alex will lead the charge. Watson's the first point of contact and definitely not the target. They can also bring down to start as Palos. A little bit separated from the team, but he can knows that he has some breathing room. As they're going super deep, Entity, if they can just kite up the BKBs, they can turn back afterwards. Watson's going to look to try and deal with the Tombstone. It's looking like a pretty good start to the fight for Entity, but the BKBs now over. This will give them a free fight to be able to clean up. Not only will they will get the heroes, but they can also reap the rewards of getting Roshan as well as Tino. We'll give over the triple kill, and they're even going to call it. They want to see no more of this game, as Entity will force them to tap out. Look at all that damage that they did. Like, that's that's crazy. They did like 5,000 damage to Katahomi in that one fight, and he still lived off the back of the Chen heals coming through. Nuts. Nuts amount of uh, team play coming through from Entity, and it really felt like execration. Like we were saying, they just had their, their priorities a little bit out of whack. You know, if they get that earlier BKB even by like five or so minutes, maybe they can take some of these fights before you get into that next tier of items, and then the tier above that, and above that, you know, you were able to escape a little bit too easily there on Storm Stormer because he was given the space to finish that Manta style after everything else that he'd already gone. And it's just crazy as well that Bob was... Like, I actually thought Bob was, was going to be able to do it for the boys with the start that he had and the, the game that... you know There wasn't a whole lot that he had to be concerned about until Scepter was picked up on Slark and Palace was free farming and then it just... It just crushing down. Crushing I mean... Down. This was the definition of a bot game though, right? Like, absolutely yeah. dominating, yeah, that's true. couldn't yeah. be stopped, and then he... Surprisingly enough, you, you remember how I surprised I was that he didn't go for that dive on Storm Stormer past the tier 2 mid tower, where I feel like he honestly could have killed him. And then a minute later, he's like, you know what, let's make up for it, let's go for a dive solo into four different heroes. He dies, and then suddenly the ball starts rolling. Like, this is the one, right? He's going in semi-solo, gets stunned, gets lassoed, and that gives up a big... Uh, well, not even a kill streak, but that was the second time that he died early on into this game. I didn't even see when that fight was going on, but they cookied a, a creep that was about to die that yep. got burnt to the flame guard, so it stunned instantly. I, I don't yep. know if he, he... I mean, honestly, probably lives if that didn't happen, so... Uh, I also want to mention Entity with this Primal Beast. I think this is a very interest. Entity have always had, like, interesting strategies. I think if we go back to uh, ESL on Thailand, I think it was, or, or Genting, um, where they were playing the position for Sven at that time, and they were having a lot of success on it with, like, the, the Agshard um, Warcry, where we're starting to see, like, this Primal Beast was a hero that was uh, popularized from mainly nothing to say on PCLG, the Bali Major. It's looking pretty good as a position for man. Like, this hero does a, a lot, and, and with that change to Pulverize going through BKB on, like, a 30-second cooldown, this hero can really provide a lot to a draft, so I wonder if this is you know, something that we need to kind of pay attention to now with uh, with the upcoming games and, and days too. And just for my selfish benefit, I love watching Katomi on these heroes that he can style on, right? Yeah. Like the individual players coming through, like he was pinging after this team fight, he had uh, tanked up 5,000 damage for the rest of his team. And at the end of the day, like you're a primal beast that's used your trample, that's used your uh, pulverize really any value to killing you anymore probably not but it's just the way that entity positioned themselves watson felt unkillable on the left side dealing with the tombstone and then he just joins the rest of the team when the bkb is expired like you mentioned and uh it, it was all done from there yeah, that was indeed. So Entity, a incredible start to our second day here at the Riyadh Masters. It's very important if they can build some momentum this day as well, considering they have the decider match going on later on. So uh, off to a good start. Can they continue with the momentum? We'll find out after the break. Progress is a race that has no end. After every finish line, another challenge awaits. How can we continue to push innovation in a sport at the forefront of technology? This is how. Discover how Aramco and the Aston Martin Formula One team aim to meet Formula One's sustainable fuel targets. Aramco, powered by how.
الحياة لحن ولأننا جزء من مقطوعة عظيمة تحركنا تلمسنا تصنع من لحظاتنا ذكريات بديعة لأن الوجبة التجربة المغامرة حياتك بعد جديد في لتون الرياض All new Honor Magic 5 Pro Freeze even fleeting emotions in just milliseconds. Take marvelous night shots with lightning fast exposure. The display reveals more details in bright areas with an astonishingly long battery life that just keeps going. The latest flagship chipset brings you exceptional performance. Unleash the power of magic. Honor Magic 5 Pro.
We are back with our second game coming up shortly. Entity off to a great start on the all-important day here. We'll see what Execration are able to do. We both were saying this was definitely more of a... A draft that we've seen work out for Execration in the past. It was looking great to start. And then a couple of things just uh, fell the wrong way. And all of a sudden, the, the quickie crumbled. And uh, Entity were, were happy to munch it up. That was not a draft issue. That was Execration's execution. That was a bit of an issue. You know, they, they finally set up to have a pretty good game. And unfortunately, they just fed way too much of that permanent agi over to Watson. And we were saying it before, right? You were a little bit anxious. You know, can they go? Can they contest this Roshan? They were already 14k behind. But if they lost another fight, if they let them farm for another five or so minutes, Snapfire yeah. would have been level 20 and it would have been over anyway. So they had to take their chances while they had them. And unfortunately, Entity were just too good in that game one. You can wipe the slate clean, though. Look into the, the next game and see what they're able to do a little bit differently. It looks like in that in particular... You will not have two of the same heroes with the Primal Beast and the Chen Bandar. Uh, I wonder what Execration are going to pick here. Are they going to go back for the Undying, or are they going to pick up, once again, the Beastmaster for themselves? I like Beastmaster overall, and I think you do need to steal it away from Entity, because they are a team that will absolutely play it if you give them the opportunity to. It's just a great pairing in the first phase, especially because, once again, Entity have that second pick, so they... You can pretty much win a lane with like a Beastmaster Skywrath combination. You know, there's way too much damage, decent enough survivability that you're not going to be chain feeding in that lane. And then you can just set up your mid and safe lane for success. Yes, we get my Broodmother. It's always a plus. We have too many spiders here anyway. Yes, yes. One less spider will always make the world a better place. Did your spiders miss you in your casting shed, by the way? I know that you have a, a few that are residents there. I uh, I vacuumed them all before I left. And <laughs> oh my god. Heartless. Was... They were yeah. keeping the, the flies away. Ah, uh, they can go screw themselves. <laughs> they were, you know, they weren't hurting me, but still there was a bit too many of them for, for my comfort. So I was, you were I was... sending a message. Yeah, I was telling all the other spiders here, you think about coming in this room, I'm, I'm going to do some unspeakable things to you. suck you up in a vacuum and ah uh, yeah yeah that's that doesn't sound like a fun life to be living you ever worried that they're just going to crawl up the tube yes. of the vacuum afterwards yes, sometimes i am <laughs> you gotta get rid of that that bag immediately after you do it uh i don't know how i feel about the clockwork by the way as a first overall pick especially considering you banned the primal beast you know i know it's it's a versatile hero you can play it four and five but I would have been totally fine with them just picking the Undying again. I, I really just think that they chose a couple of really bad fights and it stopped their snowball. They they were reliant on getting those early BKBs and just running at Entity before Watson and Stormstormer got too big and they didn't take the opportunity. Five seconds remaining. Yeah, I, I wonder what route they're going to go down now to pair the Clockwork up with because I'm too and a little bit intrigued on this first pick. So like I, I'm still fine with the Beastmaster, honestly. Like, you want better vision than the enemy team when they've got Glimpse and Lasso available to them. Like, if you could just scout out a bunch of ganks, it forces them to use smokes for that sort of potential. And smokes are a finite resource. You only get so many of them. So something that you've already got a clockwork to give a little vision, but it's not like permanent vision, you know? So I I'm very happy with Tino to pick it up again. There you go. So what do you take away is the real question. Because this bat ride can go anywhere other than mid, three, four. Watson's not going to be playing it, but you've already got an incredible amount of flexibility with second pick. Are you so, playing batters five? What do you mean? He's got to disrupt him, man. It's going to be Fishman playing it. He's got like five heroes that he okay, plays. Okay, so, sure. All right. <laughs> so you don't mean like overall, you mean like this one no, specifically? No, no, yeah, 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 sure, yeah. Yeah. This game, yeah. This draft. Where's the inspiration? What can they look to go for? Remaining. I mean, at least they've got a little bit more control for this Bat Rider now, right? Previously, they had remaining. Chains and they had Raw. And I don't think Tino played a bad game, but they Dad did feel back. like they missed out on a bunch of kills just off the back of, like, I mentioned the 360 no-scope attempt that didn't come off. And uh, also just a few of those fights, I was just waiting, waiting, waiting for that Raw so that they could make the most out of the BKBs when they were popped. It just never came. Uh, I know, I'm, I'm very intrigued on in what they're going to pick at their 16th, 17th. I guess we can 
Look at entities though, more than likely we're going to see their secondary support drafted. Trying to think of some melee heroes, because of course that is where Katami really thrives, so... Mm -hmm. I mean, no no clock, no primal, so... We haven't, at least the games that I've seen, they haven't tried to run the tiny just yet. Um, I don't think we've seen them pull the tusk out as well. Is this the pudge game? <laughs> is this the one? Not, but you know what Five i can remaining. i can dream that it's uh, the way i mean who knows maybe uh no shadow demon feels pretty horrible this game actually i'm just thinking of stuff to build up stacks for the bat rider to be able to take to mm. treant no spirit breaker doesn't feel amazing against clock and all that io probably not pudge probably not st probably not it might not just have to be the tiny honestly I mean, yeah, the, 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 that is if the, the bat rider is going to be played as a three, right? Then, like, that's that's why we're looking at, like, a, a melee four. They do want to give the Storm Storm of the, the bat rider, then, of course, the, the potential then to mm. go for Gabby's well, hero. With the, with the being Storm Storm as hero, potentially, I'm thinking that's... I don't think Execration think that's going to be the case, or, like, Entity would ban out Bloodseeker, basically, because you, if you're going mid Batrider, you really don't want to be playing against that Bloodseeker, right? You're all based on movement, you're a lot more, let's say, active than, like, a, a Position 4 is. Surprisingly enough, like, Position 4 Batriders are actually very arm-intensive, or rather they're, like, distract-oriented, you know? They're, they're playing in front of a Tier 3 tower, cutting waves and getting neutral cams at the same time, because you can afford to die. Mids can't afford to do, die in that way. They need to be looking to go for kills and taking up some of the safer farm. So I think if you get rid of a hero like uh, Bloodseeker, it's really just going to open the game up for Batrider to be as aggressive as it wants to be. Yep. I think uh, for Execration, because I was trying to think of some of the heroes that could go 16th, 17th, I've just, I have no issues with them going back for Bob's Ember. I think it matches up very well versus the Disruptor and the Batrider. Um, I would like if that that is the case then some a lot of damage from afar because you kind of don't really have that like all three of your heroes need to be in the middle um maybe that's when you were the sky could have came into play would have been very nice with the clockwork pairing Ooh, shadow friend huh so what do you go against this you go like a puck i don't think they're lacking in damage necessarily you know dream coil plus let's say level two maybe three battery assault um and you should be able to confirm a lot of these kills you can still look to go for you know a higher damage position for like let's say uh i don't know dark willow for example to be able to combine together with all of this um and willow's fairly capable of ganking a shadow fiend as well how certain are we that this is all watson sf over storm stormer I'm not certain. That's the, again, Entity are just so good with their, their flexibility, right? I was thinking maybe they would reveal that the Bat Rider is a core with this pick overall, but now they're just revealing that you still don't know where, where this Bat Rider is going. It could be 2 3 4, um, and we're still going to show that Shadow Fiend's not even necessarily locked into the safe lane either. Don't hate this, you know? Like, it, yes, Pugna, it's a lot weaker than it used to be, but Storm Spirit should be able to get enough farm for that mid lane. I wonder now, like, is now the time to go for the Spirit Breaker and just absolutely crush that mid lane if you feel confident enough for the Shadow Fiend to be played there? Which is a Shadow Fiend favored matchup. It is. Storm's, like, better than, like, you know, your Ember Spirits and all that sort of thing. Speaking of Ember, they're just going to play it into the Storm as well. A lot of physical damage output potentially coming through here. And not a lot of easy control, though, for, for Execration, so. We have kind of seen Kiyotaka in particular is, is one that has revitalized the Orchid Storm. I know some other people are doing it as well. Might be something that you're considering this game to give you a little bit of extra uh, ways to lock the Ember into place. I think so. Like, uh, you don't have as much of that, like, uh, regen and intelligence coming through from the Orchid as you used to, but you've got a Pugna to be able to play around with, so he kind of solves that issue for you. So it really does force SF and Ember to go into those earlier BKBs to be able to survive through a lot of that uh, that pressure. Not that Ember doesn't like to do it, but you know, it certainly is a bit of a response that's going to be necessary. I, I love this ban as well, the Faceless Void. I really feel like 
you mentioned it before, right? They're lacking a lot of that reliable catch. You know, the raw, short-ish range. Hook shot, you need to be really on point. Storm Spirit, you can react in time as he zips in. I guess you could probably say the same about the Faceless Boy, but really, how many position ones are there out there that can provide that hard lockdown uh, that they're... I still feel like they are lacking somewhat on Execration, you know? Couldn't be a PL coming out? Timber Legion band? It's possible, but again, again, you're like you're against an Ember, you're against a Shadow Fiend. They do decent enough against the PL, I think. Maybe not so much the SF. Like you're not going to be building Magic Shadow Fiend as a position one. But again, they still have the last overall pick, so just look to appeal response in there. It would be a bit difficult. Well, what are they? What are they? This what? So I guess they think the Batriders is a support with those. Um, last yeah. last two bands. So, if it's a Batrider core, there's not a lot of ways you can address it an illusion here in regards to the supports. So, we'll see. We'll see what the choice is going to be for Execration. They banned up the Morphling as well. So, even though that hero is, uh, was nerfed a little bit, still matches up very well versus the Shadow Fiend. So, they are trying to at least protect the SF in regards to some of the carry matchups. I'm wanting to see what Execration go with this last overall pick, but for Entity, I'm leaning towards like a Marcia or a Night Stalker or Gabby, just because they don't have the like an incredibly strong lane yet at this point for Execration. And if they pick a slowish, weak laner, I think you can absolutely get away with either of those. And I mean, especially the Marcy, just pair that together with a Shadow Fiend, and you are not lacking in that early right click. A little bit of extra control for the Storm Spirit as well. Doesn't go astray. Always take a little bit extra control. Makes maybe it does kind of make Dota a little bit easier to play. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking like, yes, they can go things like you know the Mars and the Axe that'll deal with like a Storm Spirit or a Beastmaster, but you still have to consider that there's a Pugna in the game. So I just want something that's going to be able to get onto the Pugna. Ooh, okay, something else that uh, we don't really see all that much outside of like Liquid. We just Where played it too. Yeah. Uh, did not Is have a lot the... of success against Asta with it. Yep. They just, just go to the Mars. Okay. I mean, I, I don't hate it. Uh, especially now, I suppose, with the uh, the Muerta, right? Like, if you're going into that ethereal form with a Pierce the Veil, you still can get speared. You still can get locked down, and you are preventing a lot of this ranged right-click damage on the enemy carry, which is, of course, going to be such a key tool to be able to stand and fight. Because if you're not having to worry about the Muerta, Watson is just going to be able to lay down hell with this SF. How are we feeling about this draft uh, overall? Because, you know, we've got some interesting stuff. Muerta has done a carry that we get to see too often. Shadow Fiend um, had, you know, a couple of good games at the Mage. I know Tier 2000 was looking very good on it as well, but this is still a hero that can be very hit or miss, especially up against a lot of heroes with a, a BKB pissing control, like the Clockwork and the Beastmaster. So... How do we feel with this second game? Do we feel like Entity have what it takes to be able to get the 2-0? I think they do. Um, a lot of that just goes to how they've been playing overall in terms of that versus the draft. Like, I don't think this is a horrible draft by any means. By Execration, I can see it working. There's a lot of synergy there between you know the Pugner and the Storm Spirit. That's obvious. The, uh, the Clockwork and the Muerta, you can use the Deadshot with the Cogs just to have it act as a stun. Doesn't matter how you need to target it. You can just get a lot more damage off. And even just the Beastmaster, right? It's a reliable laner. It's going to give a lot of information about this enemy team that's going to be playing a farm-ish heavy draft. And uh, when you're playing with a Storm Spirit that just wants to be constantly zipping in, that's what you want. You want the information to enable you to go for the kills. So I can see Execration's Avenue to potentially win this game. I'm just more confident in Entity being able to get it across the line as they have five times so far in this play-in stage. What are we effing about? Oh, no. I think it was Execration's rating that Gabby gave them. I thought it was a G. I don't remember. No, he gave TSM a G. And they won one them. So, they did one. lose game one to Virtus Pro, though. Uh, TSM, spoiler alert, from one of the other streams. So, that means that Entity win this game. They lock in third. There's no question of how these tiebreakers are going to work, yada, yada, yada win and you're third and you're facing sixth place from the other side and that might be beast coast i haven't uh, we'll have to wait and see the second round of games how they're going to 
come up, but they did have to play with uh, Stand in here and there, which is part of the reason for their results not going necessarily completely the way for them. Who's this? Beast Coast? I believe so, yeah. Who's the Stand in? Uh, they were using their coach. Oh, really? Oh, I didn't know that. Yep. He was standing in for Stinger on the latter part of the day. Oh. At least the against Pandas. Hopefully everything is okay. Mm -hmm. But that is spread out. <laughs> I've not seen that. Not that it does too much. Palos. Palos. Oh, oh, oh. His cheeks oh. are about to get spread out. <laughs> what? You, you can't be saying that. <laughs> that is so outlandish. You can't say that, dude. No way. <laughs> I don't even care about the first one. That is... Uh, Arbeng is psychic. So he knew what was coming. A wild thing to say. <laughs> 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 Alright, first blood picked up the voice on Entity. Uh, who got it? Was Katomi that was able to find it. So, let us see how this mid matchup is able to go. Uh, I mean, we've seen this matchup for years of Dota. Storm versus the Ember. Definitely, uh, for a while, was Storm Spirit favored. I'd say it's uh, much more even now with how strong the, the Ember has been as of late. But I would really just say it comes down to uh, execution. Execution and power room control, or even water room control, honestly, is going to be a, a big factor towards all of this. Of course, the one that is going to be enabled a lot more in this game is Bob. Like, eventually, you're going to have the Shadow Fiend that's got the presence of the Dark Lord and everything else going along there to really give the, uh, the S, uh, sorry, the Ember a little bit more of that right click damage. But we were saying it before you've got the Pugna Gas Station, you've got the Beastmaster Hawk that's really just going to allow Bob try and find those key kills and be able to use that to be able to try and get their second win of this play-in stage. Tomi so might be in some trouble. A bang, only level one at the moment. Kind of a nice start with that blood grenade into the into the dead shot, but regardless, just some harass. They need the cogs though. Like this is something that you probably secure that kill if you just have the cogs available to keep him locked in. I suppose he has the firefly though to be able to get out of it, so it's not a, a complete secure. But I really don't want to see Abeng using this blood grenade um, just willy-nilly. You know, you need to use it to confirm a kill, 100%. <laughs> poor Katomi. I mean, sorry, poor Abeng. He's just, like, stutter-stepping away from this clockwork as, uh, well, we look up there, and they, they are going to be back to safety. I'll give it another hype. Yeah, there we go. One more? Ah, oh, it's kind of boring. All right. Where my high fives at? No high fives down bottom? No, no high fives. So, I mean, all, all is going well. Nothing too crazy. Everyone's having a pretty good time. I guess the, the Beastmaster's not getting too much. I mean, even mid lane 17 6 compared to the, the 10 and 2. So, I do actually wonder, like, with that slight nerf in the Flame Guard, the, the magic barrier, how much this goes. Is back way of the storm spirit if it, because again it used to be storm favored is it now kind of at least a little bit more in your favor or not we'll see with the changes but bob's off to a good start like he was last game you're just saying like the slight overall barrier of decrease because yeah. I, yeah. I i think that change where they made it where it was like what was it 70 percent of the damage absorbed is actually uh done to the flame guard so it actually ends up lasting longer i thought that was something that i was actually above to the ember spirit at the end of the day right because means that you've got a little bit more uptime even if you are going for this like full-on spam laning stage yeah unfortunately it's it was at that you know this hero was very strong like we saw at the major in a dream league a lot of people were, were hyping up in that first round of picks as fishman almost going down to the round he axes down bottom in mind to the blood grenade and survives on six health i think i saw him drop to as watson should be able to chase down shanks pops herself steps into the trees Shanks is going to be okay. Do they turn on Watson, though? Tino's lacking a little bit of mana to keep the Axe Spam going. His last one. He might have one more. Let's see if he's on point with Watson, because he does have 10 stacks of those Wild Axes. Just hits one of them. Might have been enough. Still holding on to that magic wand for full efficiency, is he? Yeah, it's going to be a little bit of time until he gets uh, some sort of regen coming through as well. I mean, might even be forced to just walk all the way back to base. Oh, they might get a kill instead. Oh, this. Just back and forth. And for a while, like, there was a lot of action going on mid, but bot lane is where they secured the kill. 
Yeah, you were brought up before, like potentially this, this matchup can be dependent on who's able to secure some of the runes, and we, we saw that be the case with, with Katomi rotating over. So Bob's going to be at least be able to get a bottle refill thanks to Shanks teeping in. So oh, Tactical death, we love it. Ah, uh, yes. But you do leave Palace now alone top lane. Tries to play around with the calling, but it's not really going to help too much. Gabby's still got the speed to work with. Gets a connection up against the tree. And this is going to be a, a wave and a half that the Muetta is missing. He uses a blood grenade. That's not the real purpose for using that one, right? It needs uh. to be once again to confirm a kill. And Arbing, he might just die again. It is still 20 seconds until the, uh, the Batrider has all of his spells available. But that's, that's fine. Arbing, he's not really in a position to be able to make too much contesting happen at all. And Palos feels like he's just going to be left up here solo once again. Uh, they dive if they really wanted to. Instead, they're just going to take a creep wave away from him. Are they just going to kill the clock? <laughs> yep. Katomi can do it by himself. Why not chuck out a spear from Gabby? A little bit of gold going to, to the bank for Kim. So, oh, this top lane's off to a great start. We'll see what the other lanes are going to be able to do to potentially offset one of the, the weaker starts for them. Shanks mm -hmm. thinking about rotating over to try and secure the rune, but once again... It is going to go the way of Entity. It's a shield rune as well, so good luck killing Storm Stormer now. Almost up to level 6 on both of the Spirit Bros in the mid lane, but again, this is going to be... Mm, it might be active against each other as there we go, that shield rune is forcing it to be popped, but... I have to say, as soon as Arbeng shows in this glimpse. lane, do you not just go for a kill? What is that re No way. Alright, Fishman, great position with his Disruptor. Somehow was able to find the glimpse back. He might die to the blood grenade. Although he's got enough health to be able to survive through the ticks. So, uh, beautifully done once again from Entity. Five and zero. Mm -hmm. Dance all day. Keep getting away from them. And uh, yeah, this early game really not going the way that they were expecting an execration. Once again, the lane setup is fine for them. I think it's just they're, they're out executing them right now. Wonder if they're going to go for some sort of YOLO play here, trying to yoink away one of Ooh, those wisdom on runes. Zip in from Bob. Raindrops not going to be enough. He's got a big one to play with. Watson tries to turn with the razors. He might be able to get the kill actually onto Tino thanks to the damage output. Fishman, you get the, the vision. Oh, turns Bob instead, who now might see a freebie. Doesn't have that much mana to work with, but it's just enough. To get the kill, and Tino will soak some of the experience as well and live to tell the tale. I mean, that was really nicely done by Bob. He made sure to give him the uh, the bottle sips over, to make sure that uh, he was able to live through the couple of those tower hits. He gets an extra bit of assist gold. All the while, you've got Pugna sitting mid, getting that very, very valuable mid experience. He's also the one that was lowest on uh, the experience charts at the point, so he ends up getting that wisdom rune in addition to Bob. So I think little things working out for Execration off the back of that last little rotation. Nicely done by Bob. And that was without a power room, we have to remember as well. Need to keep doing that though for the Storm Spirit. Need to also get some power runes as well. A little bit too early with the remnant there from Storm Stormer. So Bob's going to be able to snag the double damage rune. Which these are the runes that he needs to be able to have a successful early game. Who's chasing down here? Katomi. Gonna be able to get the kill. Nice TP out from a bang. I don't know if Bob should be gone for this. He's gonna try though. Spies a freebie onto Fishman. Is he gonna have no mana to still play around though with his food? Looks like it's not gonna matter. I don't wanna see him be the one to take up this big uh, hard stack inside of their ancient camp area. Just because you're drunk. Aurora from Tino. Palace gonna try and enter through the rift. Watson. He needs some boys, and there's no one. Watson's going to try and charge up the Requiem, maybe into a TP out. He's got the triple raises. Now with the damage, the turnaround will be there. Finally, reinforcements have shown up, and they just need the vision for the glimpse back as well. Fishman drops the ward to drag Palace back to his own death. Watson's going to still be a little bit cautious that he doesn't join him. But really nicely done with the Requiem early level up. It does leave Gabby alone top lane, though. To Bob instantly spies the freebie. He's going to be rewarded for that maneuver. And he just dodged everything there on Watson. He was, you know, juking out using that great movement speed that Shadowfiend has just innately able to walk away from a lot of the aggression. 
course, helps out that it's nighttime as well. That little bit of an extra movement speed buff that all these heroes get. Oh, by Palos. Oh, no. Oh, Whipsed. man. He, g he gated bottom, tried to get the kill on Watson, dies, TP's mid, then gets glimpsed all the way back to base. The feels, feels bad, bad man. man. That is, oh, yes, man. that is a feels bad man, indeed. So what Stormstormer got? He's got his Orb of Corrosion finished up, the Abbey. Eh, nothing, no major items, but he's got that Arena of Blood available. They will like, get a kill onto Shanks, really preventing him from hitting up onto that level 6. And Bob's going to be cautious. Fishman is really static. close to having the Static Storm. Needs his Crete Wave. I have to keep tabs on if they want to go straight away or not. Storm Storm is a bit low on mana. I don't think they can if they had the Static Storm. See what they're getting top lane though. I mean, Mars is a hero that doesn't make a whole lot of rotations early on. Very uh, strong laner once you're able to get these stat items, and with what's in here as well, you're going to be able to get a easy tower, probably uncontested. Moritz is going to start to come. I feel like Entity kind of wanting people to defend this area. They, they're really looking for a fight having this arena. I mean, Kataomi's got plenty of movement speed to be able to play around with. Tranquil's Windlace, Lasso also available, and they actually spot out the courier. Alice's own little, even is that little rabbit thing, giving him away. <laughs> Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Wabbits. Wabbits. Weren't really a Bugs Bunny kid. No, uh, not really. The Wabbits are kind of cool. Uh. What are we the Wabbits? Feels, uh, feels a lot more like a C game with a pause, that's for sure. That is true. Used to be the start of every single game that we were mm. casting, but... Sure, you know what? Oh, Gabby. <laughs> It's <laughs> the time in a C pub, it's because someone wants to go have a smoke after the, the draft. What's Katomi saying? I don't know. I would hope that Gabby has taught them a bit of, uh, you know, Tagalog to be able to throw at them, specifically for this matchup. Maybe just let the, the gameplay do the talking, because currently it is doing that. Now the tower's gonna this is go Gabby down. we're talking about, all right? That's <laughs> let's, true. Let's, let's not get it twisted. That's true, that's true. We're gonna see Execration start to consider about balling up bottom lane, trying to play around with their strongest hero being Tino, top of the net worth. I mean, Bob's also he's pretty farmed as well with those four kills like we saw last game, but it's just a question of what is he able to do with this time around? Because he had a good start, but those couple deaths in the Ember meant that he was kind of a non-factor towards the, the middle stage. That could be a very similar thing this game as well. Maybe they're feeling like they can go on to Gabby. Bob's just, like, used his full mana to be able to zip all the way back to base to get a refill. The only reason I can see for that is if they want to go for a TP into an instant zip forward. Because he had plenty of creeps to be able to farm at his disposal. But who do you go on here? Like, he's just going straight back to where he just was. So I think that's a bit of a wasted opportunity, especially when you've got this level 7 partner to be able to play around. Now he just doesn't have that TP. So if a fight does break out, you you don't have a storm to play with. Not super late game. He's not going to be able to zip Radiant's across the entire map. Is under attack. Just remembering the Null Talisman patch. The five Null Tallies never run out of mana. I forgot about that, honestly. Probably probably a good thing. Just put it out of your memory. Yeah, yeah it, was, I mean, it didn't last for too long. You know, the Arcane Blink as well. Storm, storm Spirits. At least that costs a lot of money. Yeah. You know? <laughs> True. No, so this is also the annoying thing about a Batrider, right? Where you can just take mass jungle camps inside the enemy's territory. Palos. I mean, they see a bit of a freebie. You are very far forward. Yeah, you, you can't be farming here. You did have a support to act as a bodyguard, but I don't know where the clockwork went. Palos would try and turn with the PSC Veil. Might be able to get the kill on that the one fish tree. man. Get into the tree line. He does. And with Gabby holding Palos down, it means that fish man's going to be able to watch by him. Oh, they get the kill, so that's just another one. On to Gabby. Four deaths now. I mean, he just cannot be up that far solo. But he must have thought that the clockwork was with him to be able to act as that bodyguard, but there's no T1 tower to be able to play around with, and Disruptor missing off the map makes you feel very, very anxious prior to picking up a BKB, and he is nowhere close to it. Alright, Tino is the, the axe factor for me. He's about to get the kill onto Katomi. 
So he's incredibly farm, but what are they going to be able to do with the early timing out of the helm of the Overlord is the big question. Is it the Axe Factor? Uh, I think I said X Factor. I'm like, I uh, meant to say it, but sure, X uh, Factor works as well. Absolutely. Oh, I love a pun. So tell me, yes. what, what, what I mean, do I mean, they do? <laughs> they need this up with the Overlord pretty much, right? I'm a little surprised that they haven't gone for a few more kills, but maybe now with the Witchblade, with the fresh Wisdom Room picked up, they feel like now's the time. Like, you've already lost tier 1 mid and top, but you still have enough of the map to be able to make plays with. Uh, I'm just really just looking at Tino, where he sends this next call, the Wild Four, as to where they're going to look to make a play. He's backing up, he's still going to be farming for this next little bit, and I feel like you've got to use everything that you've got at this at your disposal. You can't be wasting too much time. There we go, he finally sends out the Hawk, but it's going to be after they basically connect onto a hero. Here might be Gabby. Shot's going to be on the mark for him, bang the follow-up, will be there from Bob as well. TP's is starting to come out, but I don't think Gabby's got the health pool to survive through this initial round of damage. And this is what we've come to expect over they the Pogna and the Storm, but they want to fight. Shanks, well, there's a freebie. I don't know if they're going to get Bob, however. What's the call now for Execration? They've got a couple extra heroes here, even Wets are in the tree line, but... You probably don't even want to reveal yourself if you're powerless. You are so far behind that you could just be a free kill. So in the end, it will be a two for one. Both supports going down from Execration, but you at least get something out of the map. And Tino has this Helm of the Overlord now. I was so nervous for Palace there. Like, he was farming up really close to where they placed that Deep Observer Ward. Could have just patrolled back past it and ended up dying once again. But instead, goes bottom. Takes a nice juicy wave with a flag bearer creep and a couple of uh, range creeps as well. He's also got a siege creep to be able to pick up, so he's actually going to be re able to recover his net worth a little bit off the back of just this one simple move. So that is a very worthwhile team fight. I just need, think we need to see more of it out of execration. Nice flame break, max distance. Gets him out of the cog. Still not going to make the attempt, but the Static Storm was used on his dying breath. If they got the damage, though, Shanks tries to help out with the Medic. It's not enough to keep him alive. And now Watson, well, he's ready to go. Gabby's got another round of the spear. Gets a connection. Shanks will delay this momentarily thanks to the decrep. But now Gabby's even eyeing up Tino. Arena's up now. And this should be an easy chase down. Really nice spell casting. That's all set up thanks to the flame break. They're able to just store that death out from the disruptor. They could get the static storm. That little bit of extra control meant the storm was killed off. That gave enough time for N to these heroes to be able to join the fight. Oh, look at this. They're pinging Palace as well. Trying to pincer him with one TPing into the tier 2 tower. One coming from the outpost. But Palace, good enough to be able to realize that that's what was coming for him. Backs off. Goes back to farming. And this entity team looking pretty good. They are looking pretty goddamn good. And I will say as well, Gabby quite impressed with his performance so far. One of the games we've seen him play in the offlane. That is not an easy role to be able to, to rotate to at all. I mean, at least, you know, he was kind of a... was a bit of a carry, so knows maybe some of the matchups and how to play against that. But I think he's having a, a pretty solid showing so far. I, lo I just love watching me some Katomi and Watson Dota. They are the big two standouts on this team for me. I know a lot of the time when they were having a lot of their big success, it was Stormstormer doing a lot of the work, and we saw it the other day against Liquid, giving them their only loss up until that point, was really on the back of his Invoker. But uh, yeah, it, it just really feels like Watson's playing on another level right now. He's yeah. feeling himself. He's built up the confidence over DPC tours. And are they going to be able to take this Roshan quickly enough? I think they I know they're all coming. Arena up in five. Abeng's got a pretty good position to act as a blockade. Does his best to be able to cancel the blink and he'll buy enough time for Roche to be claimed. Still a static storm's dropped on the outskirts. Fishman has no one else to follow up until Gabby's going to be able to jump in. It's a little bit awkward of a start though. Watson will attempt to charge up the rec room. The chain control's going to be there as well, but the H's it wasn't given over to power loss. So they'll put him in the grave and Bob? they might get Bob as well. An ambitious TP, but where are you going to escape to now? The age is taken out of your hands straight away as Entity can Surround him on the respawn. A perfect timing out of the spear means that Entity will get everything they needed off the back of the fight. <laughs> what the hell happened? I really oh, thought no. that that was a really nice fight set up uh, for Execration. Sure, Abeng dies, but you're very happy with that if you're able to get away with the Aegis, but you just get caught. 
multiple person static storm. I thought Shanks was perhaps a little slow with his life drain. Just beat away a couple of too many kills to the start of the fight, and you're not able to make full use out of that Aegis. I mean, it really doesn't feel like we're taking a fight at all until she's got that BKB, right? Man, I mean, she needs like BKB Daedalus plus one, I think. I, this hero is just. You need so much on this hero. She's got like a quad triple stack at least. We're gonna pop Pierce the Avail for it, but I it just. This hero needs so much, man, and you've got five deaths at this stage of the game. Like, you are a late game carry, without a doubt, and I don't know if you're gonna get there. Ooh. I mean, it's at the point where, like, with the drums, with the inner beast, with a BKB, they just, they have to take out Gabby first. I think if Gabby dies, they actually have a legitimate opportunity to win a lot of these fights. The real thing holding them back right now is when you pop the Pierce the Veil, you don't want to be moving. You want to be just standing there and attacking. And with the, the Arena of Blood dropped, mm. you just don't get that freedom to do so. All of your shots are just going to go right into the flat balances and ensure that you're not able to do any damage for a big cooldown investment. And it's not going to get any easier to be able to kill Gabby. He's got 3,200 gold in the bank, so almost a BKB for him completed. 2,200 health they have to go through. And if you commit heavily, then you, you're going to be setting up for a potential multi-man static storm. Uh, the lasso from Katomi, like he's close on a four stuff. He's got the eye of the vizier as well to help out with his cast frames. Like, it, it just doesn't look like this game gets any easier. And you know, maybe if you were playing at a, an even footing on Execration, like we could speak a lot about how late game, you, you've got access to the Shadow Fiend with two BKP piercing controls and Moeta could be able to carry, but oh man, we are so far away from having that conversation with them being down AK. We are in hogs, but nothing's happening. Uh, the, just the timing of Entity picking up their own BKPs as well, right? Like when... Palos feels comfortable enough to be able to take fights with his BKB and he's lucked out and getting a Grove Bow. They're all going to have BKBs on the cores of entities, so you're actually going to be useless during that Pierce the Veil. Like, it's literally going to do nothing for your biggest timing for the game. So um, I'm a little bit worried about how they're going to be able to respond to that. I still think, you know, you want to at least get those BKBs running a little bit lower off the back of a, a fight that forces the SF and the Ember Spirit to use them. Still not expecting things to turn out overly well for them either. His Palos should be able to pick up this Wisdom Rune, get to his level 15, so now you've got an extra 35 damage for free. Let's try and get the Tormentor out for Execration. So, don't have the greatest Ag Shard. It's pretty useless. Yes, it is pretty useless indeed. You can see Entity look to smoke as well. I do not believe that smoke was under the Hawk. A lot of lines being drawn on the map, though. They will get a glimpse of Stormstorm Shield inside well. the river, so maybe they know so, a, at least a roundabout this is, area. This is their triple BKB timing as well, and look at Palos. Palos. Oh, yeah. no. They just go the full wraparound, not getting greedy, not wanting to reveal too much. But rather just use that full extent of the smoke that still has about quarter duration and... Well, where to? You are a dead lady. And uh, Bang's probably dead as well. Maybe? Okay, never mind. Oops. Oh, yeah, they should be able to get the glimpse. There we go. Drag back, reveals at least a ward in the area. That'd be a double kill that's able to transition into a couple towers as well. That presence aura affects buildings was picked up three levels ago. Watson is not lacking in damage, that's for sure. At least level 18, he's even got that Requiem maxed out too, so. I'm gonna force someone to come back and defend this. It really doesn't want to be the Muerta again. Still no BKB on her. Tino still needs his. A little surprised that Bob hasn't gotten a whole lot more active this game. Like that is the Bob style of gameplay. He needs to get kills consistently. That's why you pick it together with this Pugna yeah. and the Beastmaster. Yeah, we we, just, we haven't seen that, right? Like they're starting to maybe make an attempt bottom, but All the rainbows they're backing off. They will lose this high ground ward, though, without having both Gabby and Katomi here. They're starting to move on over. They might be a little bit too late to protect her. You, you really want to control this area if you're Entity right now, so maybe they won't leave. Well, they still feel strong. strong enough to fight, right? Like, they know that it'll be a little bit of time as our big... Might have been saved. Never mind. Got a D ward with the boys. They just left him. <laughs> We de him with the crew, not to be. Easy kill, they defend the area. 
And the big reason why this is so important, because you can cut mid, you can cut bottom, sets up for the tier 2 tower, and you're probably going to be able to get the mid tier 2 tower as well, so... I like this from Shanks. He's doing his best to try and just keep the wave away from that tier 2, keep it alive for as long as possible, and give his cores the space that they so agonizingly need to be able to, uh, to get into this next set of items. So he stalls it out a little bit. You don't get control over that high ground vision anymore, and you still get this uh, tier 2 tower bottom. So it's not all, you know, smiles and rainbows coming through for execration, but it's the little things, right? When Entity, they had the choice to do whatever they wanted. They knew that there were four heroes with no TP. Oh my god, that was a lot of damage. Top lane, they got Palos. Nice start from Katomi. Straight back into Watson's AoE. Requiem should come off at the buzzer. As Egoisto is having quite the game. 8 1 and 6. Two deaths on execration. And. It's an anime reference. Egoisto? Mm hmm. From Blue Lock. Another. Oh, yeah, one. man, you gotta watch it. All I keep hearing is Blue Lock. Yeah, there's a good reason. Seeing for an it. arena as well. Gabby just onto the clockwork. Nothing too crazy. Fishman's gonna be here to try and clean up some of the mess as well if it is required out of him. Will be indeed with the guns back. That you just can't play the map, man. You, you've got double blink initiating heroes. Ember doesn't need one. Fishman just needs heroes to play in front of him. And with all the gold that they've been able to get across the map, with him staying alive at for such a long stage, uh, they might even get bombed. Um, oh, you went to the oh. very close. Very, very. So, I mean, those are the sorts of plays that you need to make, I suppose. He really wants this Kaya on the Storm Spirit. Maybe they just feel like they don't have the damage to be able to confirm a lot of these kills. But, I mean, if not if not now, when is basically the question that I want to ask. You know, Roshan's just about to come up. If you can get a lucky kill and use that to transition into another area where you get a little bit of map control back, maybe you get the next Roshan. Oh, Bob starts. With the Hawk Vision to be able to play with. They're going to try and get the setup onto Katomi. This is a lot committed just for a Batrider. Still alive. Now, but the turnaround, Static Storm, but the Watson response is there for the BKB. Watson's in a little bit of danger, though, Raw. Holds him into place. Watson's just going to try to output as much damage as he can before they kill him off. Is it going to be enough, though, to help Entity turn the tide to Storm Stormer? Well, he has gone unaddressed. Tino's TP will be cancelled in a heartbeat. And our Storm Stormer is going to be able to deal with the remaining cast as well. He's going to be cautious and moment to play back lot. into the right click. But the arena from Gabby stops the projectile animation as Palos should still Five? be okay. I don't know if he's going to get any kills, though. That's the sort of fight I wanted to see from Shanks. Says, oh, no, he's left him alone. I spoke too soon. Oh, nice dead Five. shot. Gabby's still got another combo. Does he go for it? Would he, no, would he go for it? It's all right. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> what okay, is going Paolo. on? From downtown. <laughs> he wrote bang. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. You know what? They're having fun. Yeah, That's yeah. what we want to see. All right. All right. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. No French, not Tagalog. <laughs> oh, dude. How much gold did he get? 1,300 gold from that fight on Powers? And is, and he's kind of rich. I mean, he's not Watson rich, but at least he's, yeah, broke anymore. What did he just buy? Is this a? Is that something about knotted fingers? I don't know what that means. <laughs> yeah, I mean, good thing we don't Old hire fingers. you for translation or. Right, blame Google. Oh yeah, definitely. It's just a scapegoat. Google is. All right, you haven't done your homework of uh, okay. learning learning new languages. <laughs> That's true. I did let the owl down for Duolingo. Yeah, how dare you? Oh, might see another fight. Is this? I think they did see that the they high ground ward. Yeah, the pings were coming out. I mean, the rocket as well. Yeah, they're giving away their general positioning. Hawk too. I think just after the smoke, they're gonna see Watson. I don't know if it's an illusion or not, though. That's a better ward. Just out of range of the sentry. How do they get the start? Abby leading the charge. Bang's gonna try and wrap around. Smoke's gonna pop. They'll see the clock. Meanwhile, Ember to get jumpstone as well. The chain control needs to be perfect. Nice. And it is. 
is Execration. A great start. Do they go back in now, though? Bob's still got full mana to play with. It's going to be a one for one, but still, they're in a pretty decent position. Back and forth, Bob. Trying to force some reactions out. He'll be so cautious of this Static Storm now with the BKB on cooldown. And he still feels strong as well. I know they've got this vision up as well. Do they have any sentries, though, to be able to counter it out? It doesn't seem like they do. Dropped everything that they had previously. Even just putting an down uh, on Arbeng just prior to his death. They're able to clear out instantly. And they just want to look to play around their vision. And why not? You know, this is the big objective. You want to play for this Roshan. And it's Execration that are on a bit of the timer. they got to go instantly off the back of this. They've got a sentry. They've got a smoke available. And they're probably going to use it straight away. Eve that got caught again by that ward that Tino had pinged out that was there. They know that it's there. <laughs> They've got a sentry and an observer ward, so they're kind of in two minds about what to do. It. They're going to get Roche, almost though. Alive. Oh, they might get the kill on a bang. He's got a buyback. He's going to use it instantly. Just Roche will go down. Bob picks up the Aegis, cheese on Palace, an aggressive Vipper in the middle, but the Glimmer Cave's going to go to protect Fishman for the moment. Gets the Static Storm once again on his dying breath. Is it going to be enough, though, as Execration trying to turn with the BKB, but the damage is lacking until they get onto Watson. Right. Lasha will buy in some time, but it might not be enough as Watson All tries to step out. Turns with the Requiem. Watson will not even die. Bob, he's going to try and do his best. He's angry for the kill. He'll find it, but he's also out of mana. Might not matter, though. Execration still Whoa. got the numbers advantage and entity. Lacking the resources to be able to make amends from that fight. And getting the Zuck from Shanks. Obviously not as strong as it used to be, but really you see the strength of this combination, right? He's already ready to just instantly make stuff happen around the map if he wanted to, but Entity back off as a team. And yeah, they lose a couple of heroes. Watson just for the third time in this game, but you see that damage output that they've got potential for as it's a regen rune that Bob's got here. The potential kill onto Gabby then as well. Nice Halberd. Oh, our band got blocked. Have they got I Lasso? Creep. I'm caught out for another 10. What he doesn't have. And he needs the Pugna. Pugna's starting to move on over. Might be a little bit too late, especially with a glimpse onto the high ground. Gavi doesn't forget that previous tip. Now, do they want to go for Shanks as well? Glimpse is up in five. Can be a long chase down. They might be lacking the vision, though. I do like the attempt that, Gabby, uh, that Bob went for, right? Like, you've got to go for those kills with Gabby. Sitting so squishy there. You knew he didn't have the BKB, but it was a fresh halberd. Picked up and uh, prevented stopping it. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> Get with vocal, we are. Bob's Icy kick. <laughs> I, I see Store Stormer. Storm Stormer's really like, dude, what are they saying, man? What? I've done nothing wrong. Nothing They're wrong. basically saying, uh, Gabby said you'll kick him too. Uh, so I'm guessing he was a bit close to, to Carlo. Carlo uh, says, I hope there's no fight. And then Bob says, that's all right, I'll just come replace Stormstorm. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> uh, like you said, some fellow brothers. This is the Shah that they were hoping for with the previous, um, the previous Tormentor that they got. You know, Shanks, he's gotten a tiny bit of value out of the Aghanim Shard for himself, but unless you're against an illusion hero, you don't really see it. Whereas Arbeng, now he's got that jetpack, so you could be in those tense situations like we saw before, you could use that as a bit of like a smoke breaking tool or to potentially get some wards down inside the smoke on the back lines. So at least now they've got even more information to be able to play around with on Execration. We, um, I think we discussed like around the 20 minute mark of like the carry carry matchup and you know, we kind of weren't at the stage where we needed to talk about it with how strong entity we're looking. But you know, these past couple of fights, we have seen that raw Along with Weta's damage is enough to kill the Shadow Fiend. This person needs to be right clicking. If you are controlled just even for a couple of seconds, that could be a disastrous for your success in team fights. So yeah, I think a lot of that's going to come down to Tino's positioning. Blink helps that out. Um, but also Gabby then as well. Potential arena to stop some of the projectiles from the Moetza. Um Could keep Watson alive. Literally needs to get 100 to 0 though, right? Because again, you have the same issue as Storm Stormer. Shot. Oh, what? They got him? Well oh, wow. All right. Oh, he was trying to be a little bit cheeky there. Again, power of the hawk, right? 
spotted him farming. This is what... I, I sound like a Beastmaster Sim, but it's such a good hero. Zoda is all about at this level of just abusing what you know and the enemy team doesn't. And he had no idea that they could see him farming up in that really greedy area. Radiance middle sequence of events starting to go the way of execration. They're hiding back this lead. 9,000, nothing crazy. And with each of these things, like, it becomes easier for them to 100 to 0 people, right? A, the BKBs are lower cooldown, but now Raw lasts a little bit longer. Hookshot lasts a little bit longer. Storm Spirit's level 20, so Vortex lasts a little bit longer. You can 100 to 0 people because they don't have any, like, saving support on Entity Gabby. right now. We're trying to force out a BKB unnecessarily. Tina's going to jump in. This is now Raw not being used oh. on Watson. What? The Conqueror stun. Watson's still going to be able to charge up the Requiem in combination with a Static Storm, but the instant BKBs will shrug it off and now a bang. I don't know if they'll get the kill onto Watson. The damage coming out is going to be relying up to Muetzer and Palace is nice. nowhere to be seen. And they'll cancel Bob's TP at the nick of time. I mean, look. And look cute, you got the kill onto Gabby, he was forced to buy back, you cancel the Requiem, but it did not matter in the end as Execration clean up their mess. I don't think they had any idea that he was there channeling the Requiem unless my eyes are playing tricks on me. That was just an interrupt that could have made it look even better for Entity, but like you said, they get the buyback, they get another BKB usage out of the, uh, the Shadow Fiend and the Mars, and they get a tier 2 tower. So and Fishman has enough gold for Scepter. And even yep. enough for a gem. So... Like, Alright, we've seen some pretty good static storms so far. Now you will not have a way to be able to counteract that one. It's the, the absolute dream. I mean, you'd love a blink dagger just so that you could stay on the absolute back lines. Even some kind of cast range assist as well. So that he's able to get that extra range on the blink and the static cast. Where to is total squish. Like, yeah. you have very, very few stats right now on uh, this item build up that you've got. Oh, Blaine Watson? Nice man to dodge. What? Instant on the finger, and there's oh, the reveal. Two. Except the static storm. Where's your BKBs? They're going to do nothing as Entity. They bring everyone. They were Why so not? goddamn fast. The reactions were there, and that was thanks to Watson. Mr. Rank 1, quick on the man to fingers, stops the use of the raw, gets out. And he's level 25 now, off the back of that as well, so even more consistent damage coming out if Fishman's able to find them in those big groups. Just lay down the razors and take them out. I mean, that's all off the back of them still not being able to take a tier 1 tower top at 37 minutes, just making a lot of those reinforcements so much easier to be able to play. Edit. The gold. <gasps> At least they get 40. rid of the creeps. Midwave is too far pushed in. Abby and Katomi are just waiting for someone to come forward, but just wanting to make sure that that back to protection doesn't kick in up top. Use their potentially last glyph of the game. Try and hold out, wait for Muerta to be back up online, but this is what someone like Fishman is able to do, right? is just such a good player on his signature heroes. I'm just going to be cautious. My god, that is a fine line to be playing. He's got to just play this distraction Dota right now. I'm sure he was just keeping track of how long that Static Storm had left on the cooldown, and I don't think it was very long at all, so he had, like, one last opportunity to potentially stall things out, and you know what? They don't lose a melee Rax in that mid lane, so, you know, that sort of play, it's worth it. But they're still playing from so far behind. Interesting choice from Gabby going to the Lincolns. Had a refresher queued up. Maybe he didn't have enough mana for all of the the, the combo. Um, I mean, it's not even just for himself, right? Like, I, I, I'm i very happy with him going this Lincolns because how have people died previously? It's been off the back of, like, a hook shot into a remnant into a raw. So if you just place that in onto whoever gets jumped, whether it be yourself or Shadow Fiend, you're golden, right? So I, I much prefer this to a Lotus Orb. That makes it much more easier now to, to see Tiger. You know, maybe that was their potential issue to, to close out the game. And oh, hang on, Bob. Nice start. Instant drag back with the lasso. Bob gets the BKB, oh, but it did not Please. matter the damage from what's It just <laughs> evaporates his health pool. And did they get it? They saw Palos. Storm Soma. Glimps back. Instant use of the BKB. He's not going to mess around. Nice dead shot oh. as well. All right. 
Palace finds something out of nothing. Gabby's still gonna try and jump into the middle. Arena doesn't provide them too much. And meanwhile, over to the left side, Tino's got the run to Watson as well. They step the boundary. And they're going to be condemned for that is now the cleanup. It's a pretty decent static storm, but Gabby will not escape. Storm is always back into the middle. Going to be cautious. So Another double roar. roar with the refresh. It's going to be a dieback. Tino. Execration. Are they doing it? Palos needs oh, last shot. little bit of damage on the Katomi for the axes from Tino. What a team fight. The Beastmaster roar came in huge. Oh, they just got way too greedy, man. You knew you knew that the Storm Spirit had popped the BKB. You got a, uh, a BKB out of the Muerta as well, and they kept diving. They could have just backed off for a good 15 seconds, make sure that they were able to come back into this, but instead, you've now got three heroes dead with no buyback. It's going to take the biggest Ag Static Storm of all time, and even then, it's going to require a buyback from Watson, which he really doesn't want to do. All of those souls going away, just the 13 stored up in the Necromastery. And they do it. Flying all the odds. There's an 83% win probability and it's swung back in expiration's favor for the first time since like the 15 minute mark. Oh. It's a big jump, Fishman. Yeah. Buyback if needed. They should be able to get the kill. It's going to force out the buyback. It is wasting a little bit of time. They're going to go for the throne though. Why not? So we've got a glyph. Fine. Do they stick around though? Palace bought out for the MKB. No buyback for him. This <laughs> is kind of an all or nothing the play. They left through the creep just to keep that backdoor protected from being there. Tommy gets the start and drag back into the static storm. Is Watson going to have enough damage? So he's lacking some of the souls. Can they secure the kill to Palace before he can turn? This is not looking good. Execration. No way. Can they just walk it down and go for the end? As Watson. He'll Gabby's die with three. a buyback, but it Experiment might not the matter. The throne is falling lower and lower. Gabby tries to protect it. Palace, Palace is alive. He's on the outskirts of the war. Slithers into the tree line. Palace is still alive. Just go for the throne. Someone kill it. Far. They don't have the damage just yet, though. It's chaos Shanks inside the it. radiant base. It's execration. They can't end this game. Entity. They will live to see another day by the skin of their teeth. Oh, almost a disaster there from Gabby. He was in a prime position to just spear that Muerta back Fish inside man, of the you can't do that. No. You can't say easy game at this point, but, you know, this is pretty standard in the C region. It's met by laughs coming through from Shanks and Palos, and they do have buybacks to be able to play off the back of. Now Shanks using it for now. He was nearly that sole seizure for the team. <laughs> he said G on Shanks. Come on, let's go. 1v1 me mid. Right, what do we got? Re uh, just a uh, raw check is huge. No static storm as well. Wild axes every three seconds as well for Tino. Start to ramp up, give him the time for it. And respect Palace being back alive. They'll know the BKB is available. He's also got. Ooh, see, twelve hundred health. All right. Come on. I can't say cheeks, but you could say that. <laughs> what? Dude, yeah, that, yeah, but you said something else along with it. It wasn't just cheeks. I don't know what you're talking about, yeah, but uh, right, we got five right. seconds left <laughs> on the storm. We've got an Aegis coming up as well. Five seconds away, they can hook, uh, they can play the rocket down towards it, and they'll see that it's getting low. This is scary, man. Land the hook. This is scary, man. Bob's gonna zip in. Who gets the Aegis? He snatched it. Bob got the second life. Watson. Tries to turn, Tino's gonna be there the real one. They need some way to keep Watson alive, anything! A static storm, that's the best they've got, and it doesn't look Still like alive. it's gonna be enough. Watson, no way, any detection, they've got it. Watson down, that's a dieback. <laughs> An ease game, it's come out from Bob as well. They know it might be over. Fishman might be able to get Tino over to the right side. The shot through gates the Vismasa. An unusual jewel, but one that will still not really matter in the end as the key heroes and execration are alive yeah but there's no creeps that's the biggest issue this backdoor protection's kicking in the ancient's healing and right now we saw lines drawn on the map by watson just basically saying keep these creeps the hell away from our base maybe the mid lane that is the the quickest one to be able to make that sort of play can kataomi do it i mean he's just gonna yep quickly yoink it down and they won't be able to claim it 
Yeah, he's got buyback as well, so it's kind of a worthwhile sacrifice. Ooh. He kind of needs to get this wave, though. Doesn't have BKB. Oh, oh, doesn't commit. Shanks there. All 25 Dude. on the Pugna. Could Shanks do it solo? <laughs> that plus 150 <laughs> Nether Blast damage. Don't you have to kill the wave outside the base? Bob's gonna start. Onto Katomi. He doesn't have Gabby's a buyback yet. It. You see, Gabby's trying to do so. No backdoor protection. Long? Yeah, I think it's a little bit too late. Palace. Uh, dude, look at him just standing there. He's not even right clicking. Oh Doing my checks. god, they are toying with Anthony, and I'll get the win in the end. Easy drops a very, very interesting game. Thank you, Mars. <laughs> An incredible actor from the Southeast Asian region as Gabby gives uh, a nice win over to Execration. A nice win. You know, there's a little bit of gifts coming through. You know, uh, maybe Gabby looked down on them thinking, you know, they were showing some of the F-tier tendencies, but honestly, that doesn't give enough respect over to Execration. They played quite well in those later stages. They don't win that game, probably, if Bob doesn't land that Aegis snatch at the end. And again, this was a draft that it felt like Entity had the edge, but Execration, we could see the ways that it was able to work. Watson, once again, showing why he's such an individually skilled player, going for these crazy jukes, just able to dodge out, living on about 100 HP at the end of everything. So, uh, you know, eventually they finally woke up and chose violence saying, hey, we could kill people if we could just 100 to zero them with our own survivability with that DKB. I, I don't really know what this kind of means in regards to the, like how the seeding occurs, because TSM, they, they got a 1-1 over Virtus Pro, so they're five and five, Entity five and five, and TSM and Entity, they one won each other. So it's not like the, the head to head um, goes in, in either way. So I don't particularly know like who gets third seed, who gets fourth seed. We'll, uh, we'll have to work that one out. But I mean, even VP, yeah, the VP and Execration have the same uh, win loss as well. So <laughs> that, that, that'll be something for the admins to, to work out. But enjoy. enjoy. <laughs> That's have all fun, I have to say. Know? I mean, the only thing that I can see that makes sense if they're not going to do tiebreakers. Uh... Maybe whoever finishes third in Group B gets to choose who out of fifth and sixth they want to play. Like, that makes a lot of sense, but that doesn't really resolve the third and fourth situation that we're talking about yeah. in Group A, now with TSM and Entity being locked in place. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen there. It's uh, an interesting conundrum that people are going to have to answer as we see a lot of these highlights of this game. This was by far the most entertaining game that I've at least seen so far in this, and it really felt like both teams were just having a lot of fun with it, right? Like, they, uh, this was a classic... 5v5 pub stack of Dota with Anta going back and forth either way. Really felt like the uh, rest of Gabby's teammates were joining in on the fun too. That they were. Everyone was having a little bit of fun. You know, some tips, uh, even in the pre-game as well. Uh, Execration, uh, I think, I th was it, it may have been Shank someone on Execration told uh, Fishman to choose Radiant. So they, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, they were already starting before we even got into the second game. Of, this is uh, that spear that I was expecting to see. Like, you can see Muerta right there outside oh, yeah, the fountain. True. And I was thinking maybe this could have been what ended the game. Ends up you know, not really getting away as Shanks trying to be that base destroyer. But even he ends up falling down. But yeah, triple buyback once again coming through from Execration. They're able to turn it around. They try and delay it a little bit, but... They were just, again, a little bit late, right? They, they had the opportunity to be able to kick that back door protection in once again. You see the great Age of Steel coming through from Bob. Another nice hook shot coming through from Arbeng. Uh, well, this was all they had. They'd expended a lot of the buybacks previously, so they had nothing left to be able to fight around. Maybe it was a Satanic that Watson needed to be able to, you know, in the middle of a lot of these uh, mm. engagements. I think... Uh, it Regardless on what item choice uh, was the route that Watson may have needed to go down, I think this, at least the late game fights, was a perfect example on some of the weaknesses of the Shadow Fiend. Like, you are a hero that you, you must be standing your ground. If you have a second, just one second, even half a second, where you are not right from, from a bash, from a roar, from a hook shot, we, we see that you will get blown up. And that happened multiple times inside the fights. I think Tino had an exceptional game. I mean, he was somehow finding farm across the map when there looked like there was no farm to be had. And then just his uh, his Hawk placements and, you know, with the Roars overall as well. So it um, was, uh, was a very interesting way to close out our first series of the day. Yeah, it was with some pretty defensive items as well to be able to protect Watson. Yeah. Like they had BKB, Trickster Cloak, Lincoln Sphere on his own. 
And then you also had a Glimmer Cape, a Halberd, and someone else had a Lincolns as well to be able to potentially save him. So even with all of that, Execrations, full-on run-at-you, balls-deep style, <laughs> was able to uh, to get the W in the end. And, you know, good on them. You know, I, I want them to be feeling a little bit more upbeat, and maybe this was the win that was needed to get them back into their groove because they're going to be taking on whoever's third or fourth. We don't know 100% yet in Group B, and we don't even know who is going to be uh, in that third or fourth position True. for Group B because we've still got those three series to come. That we do a lot is still yet to be determined for our second group. Three more series, at least on this stream. We got OG taking on Extreme Gaming. That is a very, very exciting series that we will all be able to have a little bit of fun and enjoy once uh, once the break closes. It shouldn't be too long of a break. So when we come back, second series of the night, OG up against Extreme.